Hello everybody, welcome back to another AI video. In this one, we're in Pop AI or Pop AI Pro. And this, this is a fantastic tool. If you are a student, a grad student, maybe you're in STEM, maybe you're a coder, who knows? You really gotta watch this video because this, this is an AI academic, emphasis on academic, it's an academic co-pilot that's built specifically for students and researchers. And boy, oh boy, can it do a lot of really cool things. I'm going to show it all to you. Let's go. All right, so let's kick it off. The first step, you got to go to popai.pro. Links in the description below. Just sign on in. There are a couple of different accounts. I'll quickly give you a heads up on what they are. I have a pro account, but they've basically got, they've got a free account. They've got a pro account, and then they've got an unlimited account for those of you that really like to dig in so they're all there i'll leave that up to you guys to take a look at but i just want you to know that there are a variety of accounts available and well right now they're running a 30 percent off discount so hey can't go wrong with that so there you go but now let's get in and take a quick look at how this works all right so once you've logged in you should see a screen like this and we're going to escalate things slowly we're going to start off with some basic prompting and then we're going to get into some academic paper type stuff so let's start off simple here in the middle you'll see we can just start asking questions I'm showing this to you because first off, Pop AI is kind of like a combination of chat GPT, chat PDF, where we can talk to and ask questions to PDFs, archive, notion, and even a little bit of PowerPoint put in there. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. If it says here, ask anything, what is the capital of Egypt? Okay, oops, if I could just type it. Very simple stuff. I show you this because it's going to go ahead and use chat GPT 4.0 or for Omni, which is a great model, by the way. This isn't one of the uh, inexpensive or free ones. This is a premium one. And there we go. We get the capital of Egypt is Cairo. I show you that because ChatGPT is not only built in, but for those of you that are, you know, a little cost conscious and you want to save a little money, maybe you might want to drop your ChatGPT subscription and just run with this one because it's there. So just something to think about. There's a very simple prompt and a very simple use case Let's get into a little more complex stuff. Let's go. All right, so we've dealt with the basics. You see how it works so far. Now we're going to get into some more complicated stuff here. On the left side, I'm going to click on new chat. I like to start from scratch every time. And then here we go. We've got our blank front page here. The next thing, we're going to click on AI Reader. Now, if you're a grad student or a STEM student or you work with academic papers, PDFs, things like that, you definitely want to keep your eye on this here. First thing, when I click on that, you'll see here that it says upload PDF doc max 20 files basically we're going to upload academic papers but you can upload powerpoint presentations and other things but we're going to go with an academic paper and then we're going to get it to summarize it it's going to break it down for us well you'll see it's awesome so i'm going to go into my finder and then on my desktop i have a paper called root llm and this is basically how a uh, large language model is selected by various types of um large aggregators for LLM. So I won't get into the details, but it's an academic paper. I'm going to drop it right here and then you'll see it's uploading and there we go. It's doing it quite quickly. All right, very quickly. Here we go. Now, let's take a quick look at what we got going on here. Now, the first thing, of course, you'll look here on the right side. We get a summary of the paper. This paper is 15 pages long and we get a nice, you know, one pager, maybe one and a half page summary. And if we go through it, it's done a very good job because I've already checked it before and it works good. So here we go. The document presents a framework for optimizing the deployment of large language models. Okay, and always remember, you've got the academic paper, so you can always check the accuracy of the summary compared to the paper, because they're both right here. So very cool stuff. We'll go all the way through it, and you'll see it's broken it down into problem context, contributions, methodology, real academic stuff, real good in a conclusion. Very cool. Now, underneath that, we have a few other options here. We can start asking it questions. So it's given us three questions or suggestions. What are the main contributions of the proposed router models and optimizing the cost and response quality trade-off? You wow, that was a mouthful. Okay, so I could click on that and it will just start cooking it. Alternatively, I can just send it a message. So if I wanted to sort of scrutinize this uh, paper or I wanted to ask it, you know, hey, uh, what is the top LLM? I mean, whatever, you can just ask it a question Again, you guys can go nuts on that, put in whatever you want. Just type something in, click click the little button there, and boom. We're asking questions, either pre-generated or our own stuff. In the middle here, well, here it is. It's a little bit kind of small for me, so I might just increase the size a little here. And there it is. There's the whole paper. And then on the left side, this is very cool, especially for you guys that use images in your <laughs> presentations. You can just click on the images. So every image is isolated, and you can select it. 
And not only that, you can get insights from it, which is super cool. So I've selected that image. Watch this. I mean, I don't know about you, but sometimes I look at some of the images in academic papers and I go, what are these graphs talking about? For example, well, I just clicked on insights and it's giving me the left, the center and the right, the metrics, all of that stuff's there. And you can interrogate the images if you wish. So these are just some of the things you can do here. This is super, super, super cool stuff. But watch this now. We want to turn this into a presentation, into a presentation that, you know, uses PowerPoint. You can do that too. All you got to do here is click this little button here. When you do that, we'll hover over it first, pardon me. Hover it and look at this. Create a presentation for an academic conference. Okay, I haven't been asked to speak yet, but maybe one day. Create a presentation for a business strategy session. Educational training. Sharing your research findings. Okay, all good stuff. Let's click on research findings. Watch this. It is going to go ahead and cook up a presentation for us. Here it is. It says create presentation, generate PowerPoint slides for presentation and speech. Yes. Okay. We're going to go ahead and create this one here by clicking that button. And now we're going to get a killer presentation. Here it goes. It's cooking it up here again. Section one, section two, section three. Here are the various slides and it's not going to stop here. It's going to actually load this and generate a presentation on the fly. And not only that, it's going to look good. They've got some really nice PowerPoint uh, templates that they're going to use. And then here we go. So now it's gone ahead and written the content for it, including the slides. Now just click create presentation. Here we go. Boom. We've got ourselves a presentation. And not like I said, here's the outline. Watch what happens next. It just starts to create it on the fly here. And it's formatted. It's editable. It is a fan fantastic option and i know this was long here but guys i can't stress how good this is for you academic types for you uh grad students to be able to do this with really not having to do anything other than click a few buttons and type a prompt or two this is heavy duty stuff guys i'm going to come back when this is done show you how we can make a few changes to it and then i'll show you some more stuff that you can do with pop ai all right so here we go here's what we got and i can already tell you this is fantastic so we literally went with one click and one prompt basically to create a full PowerPoint presentation with formatting. A lot of programs say they create PowerPoint presentations, but then you open it and you get a white background with some bullet points and it's just awful. But this is good. So here we go. So the first thing you'll see here on the left, the outline. So the outline has been given to us and it breaks, breaks it down by sections, by, by slides, pardon me. Look at all of these different options here. Also, if you see something in there that's not quite right, you can always just go ahead and start typing. So let's change that. Okay, so you see that nothing, nothing is baked in. You can make changes as you see fit. You could regenerate and update the presentation. So nothing's cooked in there. So there we go. There is our outline and there is our sources, which is kind of cool. It looks like it's even in academic style, uh, APA or something, uh, whatever. Oh, well, now let's get into the actual presentation. Let's take a quick look. Here are the pages. And then if we look at it here, optimizing LLM deployment. Okay, I like it. Presenter Curtis Pike, I take it. Understanding the problem, the dilemma. I mean, these are very, very well done slides. Like these are not just generic slides. These have these have like a nice look to them. They've got some nice template applied to them. They've got some relevant images, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome stuff. It gets better here. If you want to go ahead and share it or download it, I'm just going to go ahead and click here and then watch this. I can just click on download and it's going to go ahead and let me download it. So that's nice. I click on that. Downloading the file. Job done. If I want to go in there and make changes to any of the slides, I can go ahead and do that. That's also an option. So I appreciate that. And then, I mean, just look at that. If we want to change the theme, maybe we want a darker theme or a blue theme or whatever, you can go ahead and do that here. I'm going to leave that alone, but it's one click. So if I like this one here, for example... Hey, look at that. We've got ourselves a new, cool, kind of AI-looking theme. I dig it. All right, so that that was literally one click, and these are presentations that are almost ready, if not completely ready to go. There's still a lot more we can do with Pop AI. Let me show you some more stuff. All right, welcome back. So here we are on the front screen again. Now, we looked at AI Reader, and we saw some AI presentation stuff sort of built into it. But for those of you that want to get into the nitty-gritty of the presentations or the PowerPoint decks, just click on this here. And then check this out here. You can see here that there are a bunch of templates that you can pre-select as opposed to, you know, fixing them ex post there. See, I went to school too. I know the I know some words. <laughs> but
But uh, also, you can make some changes here. So you could just type in something if you wanted to create a presentation, like write out nothing. You could do that. This The last one was built on an academic paper, but you could start cooking from scratch. But here we go. If you look down here, you'll see that there are some options. There are the number of pages you're targeting, the word amount. Some people like lots of words on their presentation. Some people don't like any. I get it. Everyone's different there. The audience, the slide format. Uh, you got some different styles here. Ooh, what's this one? Online media. I got to take a look at that one later. I'm not sure about that one. But again, there's a whole bunch of different options here. And you could even let AI do the AI search. So when you're putting in images, part of me, just let the AI do its thing and it'll find uh, relevant images for you. So you can go ahead and make further adjustments to the presentations. Also, under AI writing, while I have you here, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do here too. If you are looking to create content, for example, uh, write a short article about, I don't know, LLMs, something like that. You can go ahead and just start typing in like that. And then you'll see here that the AI is there and it's already started writing. Now, that was a very simple example. I'll come back when this is done. It shouldn't take too long. I'll show you what we got and then we'll go into a little bit. It's already done. I don't even have to go back. So there we go. Large language models are advanced AI systems designed to understand and generate. Okay, great. So there we go. So if I was doing some research or an academic paper and I needed some help with a particular point or a bullet point or something like that, you can just go ahead and just click on AI writing just like that. That said, there's a little more here and it's under the more section. When I click on more, watch this here. If you are in math or coding or you need specific types of charts, there's still more stuff we can look at here. I'm going to show you the coding thing next. This is wild and it works way better than I thought it would. In fact, it works perfectly. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, the last thing I kind of want to show you here and it's brand new, but it's really, really cool stuff is their AI coding and AI math solver. When you click on more, go over here, and at the top, you'll see both of them. Here's the thing. When you look at the thumbnail, it says 01 Mini. This is important because they've integrated in the new model from OpenAI. Their 01 Mini model is brand new. It's just like a couple weeks old, maybe two weeks old, and it is incredible at both math and coding. So let's go ahead, click on coding here, and then it says here, please enter the programming problem you need to solve. So for all of you coder types, then you math types, take a look at this here. I'm going to go create a, oops, a snake game using Python. Something simple like that. It's not simple, but uh, it's a simple prompt. I'm going to click on the go button there, and then here we go. It's going to go ahead and start thinking. Again, keep in mind that this is using O1 Mini, and this is a great new model, and it's superb at uh, the coding side of things. And I'm going to show it to you. So here we go. It's thinking. It takes a few extra seconds, but there we go. It's done. Now... Quickly looking through it here, all of these cool stuff going on. Looks good. I want the code though. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and click on copy code. I wish it was harder than that. It's not. And there we go. We've got the code in and copied. Now I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go here to my Anaconda Navigator. Yeah, that sounds fancy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a Jupyter Notebook. And the reason why I'm doing this, and again, this is a little bit outside the scope of the, uh, of the video here, but I want to show you that the code we got works. It's one thing to give you code. It's another thing to give you working code. And that's what sort of separates this. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and click on new. I'm going to go ahead and click on Python because we're working with Python. And then I'm just going to copy the code in. Command V to copy the code in. And then shift enter to run the code. And watch this. The snake game by chat GPT is working. And I can start moving around. I mean, I'm not going to probably win any awards for this snake game here. But look at this, guys. It works. So there you go. This is all done inside Pop AI. This is next level stuff, guys. You got to give it a try. Links in the description below. They've got 30% off the whole thing. So if you're interested in the paid packages, they're available. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.